We've uprooted our lab and brought it somewhere totally new. Well, new for you. Anyway, we are in Zahn's kitchen. And you know what this means. Zahn? Zahn? What, Chris? I'm cooking lunch. Cooking lunch? It's nine o'clock in the morning. And it's never too early to start preparing lunch, Chris. And on the menu today... Le droit de la poisson et les haricots de la sauce rouge. What, fish fingers and baked beans? Yes, Chris, it's a delicious lunch. I've seasoned it perfectly. Zahn, it's not lunchtime. It's time for our next Do Try This At Home experiment. Woohoo! We've rigged my kitchen with every gadget you can think of. We're going to get up, close and personal. I am literally calling the shots. Look at this. Action! Ah! And today's topic is... Men's brains. That's right. And that is why I have specially got out the woolly brain hat. Doesn't get much of an outing nowadays. Thanks, Billy Bones. Now, the male brain is, well, Zand, much Zand. like other... We're not doing men's brains today. I specifically remember you saying over tea last night, tomorrow's on, we will be doing an experiment on men's brains. No, I said membranes. 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 Right. Silence, Chris. I will now do my directing. <clears throat> membranes, take one. Hundred. Well, now that we've finally sorted that out, let's talk about what a membrane is, because they're found throughout your body. And they're basically really, really thin layers of tissue that surround every organ and line every tube in your body. So it's as if every organ comes in its own special, very thin bag. To understand a bit more about why we have membranes and what they do, we need a little help from our friend, No Noise Nick. Why do you call him that? Because he doesn't like loud noises. Is that why he's wearing your ear defenders? Of course it is! Sorry to shout. Now, if you have a think about the organs inside your body, they are all moving all the time. Your heart's always beating, your lungs are always getting bigger and smaller, your guts are always pushing food along. So it's really useful that each organ is inside its own special bag. Now, those bags are the membranes, and it's called a serous membrane. So the serous membrane around each organ allows it to slide about and move a little bit. And the other thing they do is keep the organs separate from one another. If you didn't have membranes, each organ would be just a blob that would mush into the other blob. Thanks, noiseless Nick. I think we need to see a real one, don't you? Look away now if you're squeamish. This is a pig's liver. Let's cut into the liver and see if we can see the membrane more clearly that's covering the surface. And stick the knife under. So the membrane of the liver is just here. Ooh, I need a closer look. Unfortunately, like any good director, I'm prepared with a telescopic camera. Here we go. Now, you can see here the serous membrane surrounding the liver, and it's very fine, but very strong, and it's really a very thin sheet. And run! Not again! Sorry! I'm just trying to get a look. I'm trying to demonstrate the serous membrane of the liver. That's really a sheet of very thin fibres of protein with a very thin layer of cells. Because if you look inside, under the membrane, you can, you can almost just pull the liver to, to pieces with your fingers, it's a, it's a very weak tissue. Whereas when it's contained by the membrane, if I try and put my finger through that bit, membrane, I, I really can't do it. Whereas this bit without a membrane, I can actually just force my finger through the liver. So the membrane gives it real strength. So there we have it, the serous membrane surrounding the liver. Now, Zahn, did you know that uh, the membrane surrounding your lungs and lining the inside of the chest, allowing your lungs to move freely and be lubricated, is called the pleural membrane? I did know that, Chris. But did you know that, in fact, the serous membrane doesn't just cover your organs, it also lines your abdominal cavity called your peritoneum? Did you know? Yes, of course I knew that. 
Uh, but I wonder if Zahn knew that membranes line all of the blood vessels of your body, right down to the capillaries, and those membranes allow uh, certain things to flow out of the blood. I wonder if Zahn knew that. I did know that, Chris! But did you know that there is a special membrane called a mucous membrane that lines your mouth, your nose, and your bottom? Hmm? Did you know that? And which one of those would you like to have a look at? Uh, hmm? Your mouth, definitely your mouth. Time to have a word with Endwina. Does he mean Edwina? You've met before, Chris. Endwina's my good friend, the endoscope. We can only do this because we're doctors. You should never put anything in your mouth except food, drink and your toothbrush. And nothing up your nose at all. So you can see as Zahn puts the endoscope into his mouth, you'll notice that the inside of the mouth is all wet. And that is because it's covered in saliva and mucus. And the mucus is partly produced by the membranes that line every single surface of the mouth. And those membranes go from the tip of your nose, in through your nose, down all the way through your mouth, and down your throat, all the way through your gut to your bum. And also, you have mucus membranes lining your lungs. And that keeps all those tissues wet and moist, and it helps them absorb nutrients, absorb oxygen, and get rid of carbon dioxide. Thanks, Endwina. See you next time. So long, docs. The membranes we've been talking about so far are thin layers of cells and connective tissue. But did you know that there are also trillions of super tiny microscopic membranes all over your body? Where do you think they are? Are they A, in your cells, B, in your hair, or C, in your farts? <sighs> Sorry about that. Well, the answer is A, they're surrounding your cells. That's right, every cell in your body has a membrane surrounding it, and that membrane does the same job as all the membranes we've shown you here. The only difference is that the membranes surrounding your cells are made of fat, not the sheets of protein that make up the membranes that surround your organs. But they do very much the same thing. The problem is they're so small, we can't show them to you. Oh, yes, we can! Well, not a human one exactly, but get ready for today's Do Try This At Home Experiment! <laughs> for this experiment, you're going to need two eggs, some distilled vinegar, one jar, some food colouring. You can use any colour you like. We decided on red. I would have preferred green. I would have preferred blue, Zand, but we decided on red as a compromise, remember? Chris, Bronx wanted to use purple. One small bowl. All right, that's enough of that. Some water. And two days' time. An unfertilized chicken egg is effectively like one giant cell. So we are going to show you the membrane surrounding that cell by making the shell disappear. Like magic! I mean, like science. Like science. Like science. 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 First, place two eggs in one jar and cover them with distilled vinegar. Next, put the lid on the jar and wait two days. The end. Two days have passed, Chris. And it looks like the eggs are ready. Whoa! Look at this, Chris. The shells have completely vanished. Right on, get them out with a spoon. This is amazing. It's like a rubber ball. Look at this. You can see the yolk moving around inside it. Chris, I'm going to get a torch. You can see very clearly there that the inside of the egg is just being held together by the membrane. Is it strong? It does feel quite strong. I'm wondering if it would bounce. We'll give it a little bounce and let's see. They're not normally meant to try and bounce eggs, but let's have a go. Ah, Chris, it didn't bounce. But what you can see very clearly is that the egg is still running. It still looks like an egg. Now, this is the reason we told you to get a bowl is because you can then break it into the bowl. But if we have a look here, this is the membrane. It's very, very thin and delicate, but its membranes a bit like this that surround all the tissues in your body and allow them to function. This is a membrane a lot like the one we saw on the liver. Egg experiment, take two. 
So why have we got two eggs on? Because, Chris, I want to show you that membranes can block some things from going across and allow other things to pass through them. So I'm going to remove the second egg from the vinegar, being a little more careful than I was with the last one. That can rest there. I'm going to pour the vinegar down the sink. I'm going to rinse this jar and fill it with water. There we go. That's plenty. And now I am going to add the red food colouring to it. I'm going to use quite a lot. I'm going to use about three teaspoons. So here we go. There we go. There you go, Chris. One jar of strongly coloured red water. And the final stage of this part of the experiment is to place the egg into the red food colouring. Here we go. Then we can put the lid on. There you go, Chris. What do we do now? Wait for two more days. Two more days? I'm going to need a bigger book. <sighs> two days have passed, Chris. Time to have a look at the egg. Here we go. Ooh. Wow, look at that. A red egg with no shell. Chris, this is amazing. But. The really exciting bit of this experiment comes when we break this open. Because what we want to see is whether or not the membrane has allowed the red food colouring inside and made the rest of the egg red, or have we just stained the outside of the membrane? I think we should do the bounce test again. OK, here we go. Start from 10 centimetres, okay, here 5 centimetres. Here we go. Oh, it bounces! Oh, it does bounce. OK, from that. 10 okay, centimetres. From 10. Bounces even more. 20. 20! Oh! oh. Ah! Look at that, Chris! So not only is the membrane a beautiful red colour, but also if we look at the rest of the egg, it has absorbed some of the food colouring. The food colouring has travelled across the membrane and been able to get in and stain the egg. And that's one of the amazing jobs that membranes do. They allow certain molecules through them, and that's really important. Like when you eat, the food has to get across the membrane in your gut. Or when you make urine, the waste products from your blood have to go across the membrane in your kidney and get passed out of your body. Now, while Zander was making his red egg, I decided to make a few little eggs of my own. I've got a green one here for Dr. Zand. I've got a blue one here for me. Ooh. And I've got a yellow one. Well, who's the yellow one for? Yuri. Yuri. Urine. Who's that? He's a friend of mine. <laughs>